Without a country, mystery figure of seven nations, master spy for 20 years. Although his name was linked with the most atrocious outrages against peaceful governments, nothing could be proven. Zarnoff, the most hated man on earth. From where did he come? Where did he go? No one knew. His appearance in any country meant always trouble. His gigantic spy ring encircled the earth. His agents were everywhere. Horrible democratic America was not overlooked by Zarnoff. The parade of events gives you a reenactment of Nicholas Zarnoff's capture. While crowds held back by police watched breathlessly, Dick Tracy and his G-men closed in on the arch criminal, trapped for the first time in his sinister career. Here you see Tracy giving last minute instructions to his G-men. Watch while Tracy covered by his G-men's barrage braves death to smoke Zarnoff out. Blinded by the tear gas, Nicholas Zarnoff had only one alternative, surrender. And a few moments later, he was in the custody of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. In this building on October 22nd, Zarnoff was found guilty. Judge Stoddard passes the sentence. Nicholas Zarnoff, under the state law of California, the court sentences you to death by lethal gas. And may God have mercy on your soul. In closing, let us hear from the man responsible for Zarnoff's capture. Dick Tracy of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Nicholas Zarnoff was like a rat gnawing at the foundations of democracy. Like any other rat carrying germs of plague and disease, he had to be exterminated. I sincerely hope that his execution on June 14th will serve as a warning to any other spies or troublemakers who might think America is easy pickings. <laughs> Here's the Zarnoff file you wanted, Mr. Tracy. Thanks, Gwen. After I've checked it, make out the usual closed case label and airmail it to Washington tomorrow. Yes, sir. Steve. Glance over this with me and see if we can add any further remarks to the general report. Hello, Tracy speaking. Zarnoff has requested to speak to you. I guess thinking of his execution tomorrow has loosened him up. Good, I'll be right over. Keep this file open. Zarnoff wants to talk to me. Zarnoff? Can I not speak to Mr. Tracy alone? We'll be up the line in the guard room. Accept my congratulations, Mr. Tracy. You have proved your superiority. Save the bouquet, Zarnoff. I will, for your grave. Now oh, you're sounding more like yourself. I admit that my hatred for you eclipses my admiration for your talents. But I'll get to the real reason why I sent for you. There's a little house on Taro Drive. The address of that house is 243, and there's a wall safe in the living room. Combination 7481. You've already been there? Yes, Zarnoff. Your little plot to blow up anyone opening that safe failed. An apparatus known as the X-ray showed us the bomb you had placed there. And a routine checkup of your movements prior to your arrest led us to the Terrell Drive place. You win round two. There's still round three. You won't be there to answer the bell for round three. Your execution takes place tomorrow at noon. Do you think I'm afraid of death? No, Zarnoff. You probably hold the same contempt for death that you held for the lives of others. Warden. Made by Zarnoff, Warden. 
Well, he asked for steak, champagne, and the latest editions of every paper in town. Zarnoff in a few seconds. Hello, city desk. Zarnoff went to the lethal chamber without saying a word. Ten minutes later, the prison doctor pronounced him deader than a macro. Yeah. They're carting him off in the mark wagon now. That's it. Get to your post. from the time we went into that gas chamber. Have to work fast. Start the resuscitator. Unless he lives, you don't either. Why, we've done everything possible. A trace of gas in the bloodstream. Why would... Welcome back from the dead, Zarno. the deadly 
the sounds of the lethal chamber, but at a price no mortal man was ever expected to pay. That ancient drug was brewed by the alchemists of Satan. Tracy forced me to it. Tracy must die. I thought that you, with your knowledge of the Far East, could determine the nature of the drug, Doctor. When I found this torn paper and wadded strips of it in Zarnoff's drinking cup, I suspected the use of a drug. Yes, it fits in with Zarnoff's making a special request for all the late additions. Zarnoff certainly picked a clever way to attempt suicide. I'm afraid it wasn't a case of attempted suicide. What do you mean? Less than an hour after the morgue wagon left the death house, State Highway Patrolman reported the discovery of it, with the bodies of the driver and his attendant. Zarnoff's casket was gone. Then members of his gang hijacked the body in order to give Zarnoff a private funeral. Not at the price and risk of killing two men. A front could have procured the body from the morgue with very little red tape. No, it was vital to their plans to obtain Zarnoff's remains immediately. Plans? What plans? I'd rather reserve statement of that until we've heard from the doctor. Warden. Did you notice anything strange about the condition of the condemned man just before the execution? Now that you mention it, yes. His breathing was peculiar, very rapid, unusually so. Paralysis of the lungs was just beginning to take place. Gentlemen, the drug that I have just analyzed is extremely rare. A secret formula guarded for centuries by the Kali priests of India. It enables the one who uses it to bury himself underground and still survive without breathing for short lengths of time. Pardon me, doctor. Would the drug still work if a lethal gas chamber were substituted for burial underground? Indeed. As long as all breathing had ceased, no gas could enter the lungs. Heart action also stops. Good heavens, then no doubt. Zarnoff is alive this very moment. It doesn't seem possible. We learn every day. If you two gentlemen will excuse me, I have a great deal to do tonight. Zarnoff will lose no time in picking up where he left off. Is right there. How about your night watchman? There's only one. Most of the time he's making his rounds through the rest of the building. How about your other employees? They're all good men. I can give you their records. Has one of your men the tip of a finger missing? Why, no. Well, look at this. Whoever left that print supported his weight with one hand while he reached into the reservoir with the other. The devil drug, all right. And a nice clue to the man who brought it here. A man with the tip of a finger missing. But I... I don't understand. Last night, a powerful drug was mixed with the ink from one of these presses. I'll send my men back later to photograph that print. Meanwhile, if you'll see it's not disturbed, Thank you very much, Mr. Price. Not at all. He's coming out.
power. To the three, three powers. I trust you gentlemen have come prepared to pay in advance for my services to the three powers. We have the money, Zarnoff, but uh, we've been out of the running for some time. Your, uh, your prison term. It's merely that the three powers would like to be assured that you're still capable of carrying out plans. You see, destroying the great industrial canal on the day that the ammunitions convoy is to pass through is not exactly child's play. Plans at this. Even when I was in prison, I was able to create headlines. You may remember the sensation that caused several months ago. You were behind the disappearance of the radio-controlled bomb. My agents carried out the details as I directed them. Gentlemen, this instrument is actually a powerful shortwave transmitter. The receiving end may be placed in a boat, tank, plane, or anything you like. The operator sits at the controls, and no matter where the receiving apparatus is, it responds to his touch. The television screen enables the operator to see his target. These buttons will release bombs from a plane or detonate any explosive accompanying the receiving equipment. Gentlemen, with a powerful instrument of this kind, it will not be difficult to demolish the key locks of the canal completely. Our report on this, I'm certain, will satisfy the three powers. We will not question you any further concerning the details of your plan. That's very fortunate, for I shouldn't disclose them in any case. I'm afraid you gentlemen will have to excuse me. I'm expecting another guest in a little while. Mr. Sandoval will show you up. Meeting you under these circumstances is a pleasure, Mr. Tracy. Shall we call this round three? You didn't bring me all the way here just to kill me, Zarnoff. They could have done that for you in the alley. I like to mix business with pleasure. By that, I'm supposed to presume that you want to exchange my life for government information? Not at all. You die in any case. But there are two ways of dying, Mr. Tracy. The hard way and the easy way. What information do you want? The frequency key for decoding government messages. I have an intercepted message here. If you give me the key and it works, your death will be swift. If you'll give me some paper. Untie his hands. Riverside Drive. Urgent. 3109 Riverside Drive. Zarnoff got away in a plane. We found a small landing field just over the hill. I picked this up at the field. This may be our only clue to where Zarnoff has gone. Steve, you and I are going to the municipal airport. You and your men do what you can here. Right. It's a weather report on flying conditions, all right. Yes, but for what location? Well, let's see. There's a thunderstorm taking place near Brownsville, Texas, but the wind direction doesn't tally. Temperature 82, dew point 76. Here we are. Border Lake City. Every item checks. Border Lake City, the Great Industrial Canal. The International Munitions Convoy is due to pass through there tomorrow. Exactly. And Zarnoff there is more dangerous than a lighted match in a powder magazine. What time's the next plane take off? In 30 minutes. Good. Thank you very much, Mr. Stan. Not at all. Mr. 
Tracy. Hello, Lieutenant. You remember Steve Lockwood? Surely. Hi, Reynolds. Where to? Headquarters. keeping watch out at the airport like you told me, and I saw Tracy and another G-man get out of the plane. Tracy? Then we'd better act at once. Is everything ready at the cove? Robo's got the radio pickup for the robot down there. The boys are standing by. Fine. You leave at once. Deliver your false message to the Lake Patrol. Then stick around and keep your eye on Tracy. All right. I gotta see the patrol, Captain. I tell you, it's important. I've got a message to deliver to him. What is it? Oh, I'm a rancher. I live down at the east side of the lake. What's your name? Uh, Stokes, sir. And as an American citizen, I figured it was my duty to report some spy work that I saw. Spy work? Well, whatever it is, it wasn't on the level. Down at Yarmo Cove, I saw three fellas bearing something that looked to me like cases of dynamite. Yarmo Cove, you say? Yeah. Guard, convey my instructions to Lieutenant Adrian to take the launch and proceed with the detail of men to Yarmo Cove. Tell him to look for evidence of buried explosives. Captain Link. Tracy and Mr. Lockwood, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Captain, glad to meet you. How are you? There's been a serious sabotage scare, and they're here to look things over. Well, that's funny. This man just came in with a story about sabotage activity down by Yarma Cove. I sent the launch to investigate. Is that the advanced ship of the munitions convoy? Yeah. Well, Mr. Stokes, you can go about your business now. Thanks very much for your trouble. Okay. Mr. Stokes, were you ever in the newspaper business? Why, no. Cattle raising's my business. Oh, they tell me that Buster Rust is cutting down the herds this year. It sure is. You know, you don't often find a man with the tip of his middle finger missing, Mr. Stokes. Uh, what? Especially a cattle man who doesn't know that Blister Rust only affects pine trees in the northern latitudes. Now, uh, what do you mean? I mean you're under arrest as the cop of Zarnoff's. It was very thoughtful of you to leave the imprint of your left hand in the press room of the Post record. Sit down over here. I want to ask you a few questions. Here they come, boys. Wait until they get well ashore, then let them have it. I'll fire the first shot. with this man. One thing sure about that Yarmo Cove story at the phony. Your men have either gone on a wild goose chase to get them away from here or into a trap. It only take a few minutes to fly over Yarmo Cove and check up on them. Is there a plane handy? An airport right down by the beach. Good. Keep this man under heavy guard and be on the lookout for anything. Zarnoff may be planning to strike at any moment. Come along, Steve. Explosive here to blow the Empire State Building into the Atlantic. Bring the dummies. All right, boys, clear the boat.
discover anything, we'll take care of it. Come on. Anyway. 